21 past the hour, high stakes week happening now on Capitol Hill and perhaps for no one more than Speaker Mike Johnson with the future of his job on the line. Just this morning, as we've been hearing, Johnson downplayed that he is considering changing the rules that just one member can call for a motion to vacate him as Speaker. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff from California. He is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, it's been a, t a while since we spoke. I'm very grateful for your time. So let's let's go a little bit of the politics of it. To what extent will Democrats work with Speaker Johnson to pass aid to key U.S. allies, Ukraine, Israel? Well, thus far, I think we've been keeping our powder dry to see whether the Speaker delivers what he says he is going to deliver, and that is clean opportunities to vote on Ukraine, on Israel funding, on humanitarian assistance, uh, on aid for Taiwan. Uh, if he follows through with that and does the right thing, I think many members of our caucus are going to not want to see him punished uh, for doing that. Uh, at the end of the day, Democrats want to get things done. We want a House that can be governed. Uh, if we're not in the majority, we need at least a speaker who can bring things to the floor without constant threat of being uh, unseated by the most extreme elements of his conference. So my guess is a fair number of our members are going to want to uh, help uh, if that's necessary. But we'll make that decision in consultation with our leadership. So uh, the, the possibility, a very real possibility, is that uh, Speaker Johnson could only survive with support of some Democrats, if that were the case, would you vote for that? Well, that support could take a number of different forms. That support could take the form of Democrats simply, many of them, not voting on a motion to vacate. And that way, he wouldn't need Democratic votes. It would be up to Republicans. Um, so we would only be helping to the extent of not voting. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, uh, we don't want to undermine the leverage of our own leadership by sort of cutting separate deals. Uh, so I'm going to look to Hakeem Jeffries and his strategy. But, but what is most important at the end of the day is we need to get this assistance to Ukraine. Uh, they are being outgunned. They can't defend themselves. Uh, their democracy, as well as ours, is being threatened right now. Uh, and we want to make sure that aid gets delivered, as well as the aid to Israel and our other allies. Yeah, and uh, Congressman, we're showing uh, a live picture of Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who was speaking just outside on the Capitol there. Uh, she is obviously the first person to call for the removal of Speaker Johnson. So uh, while that is going on, Congressman, I want to help, if I could, focus on some of the other aspects uh, of news that we're covering around the world. And, of course, here in the States today, in New York, jury selection happening for the first criminal trial facing a former president former President Trump. As someone who served as a lead prosecutor in his first impeachment trial, what do you make of how these proceedings are going so far? I, I'm very impressed that you could have a situation where in a courtroom, in a city, in America, 12 ordinary citizens are going to decide whether a former president of the United States is guilty or innocent of charges brought against him. That's a pretty remarkable scene. It's a pretty remarkable, uh, you know, a accomplishment for any country and for our democracy that justice is applied to everyone. Uh, and the fact that they've gotten through what may be half of the jury selection already uh, is remarkable. The fact that opening statements could begin as soon as next week is quite incredible. And since justice has been so long delayed in the case of Donald Trump, with his legal team successfully putting off this reckoning, putting off that reckoning, to finally have him have to face justice uh, is, I think, uh, quite an affirmation of the system, finally. And Congressman, last Saturday, uh, Iran, as you know, sent more than 300 missiles and drones into Israel from Iranian soil. Israel is expected to respond in some way any time now. Is an escalation unavoidable? I don't think it's unavoidable. Um, Israel is going to have to obviously decide how it will respond and when it responds. Uh, Israel will respond knowing, on the one hand, they have to deter Iran from attacking them on their own soil again. That crossed the line. But at the same time, that it's not in Israel's interest to open a second front and have, you know, potentially a full second war with, for example, their proxy Hezbollah in Lebanon uh, and have to fight a war in the north as well as the war they're fighting in the south. So 
Israel is going to have to make that calculation about how do they provide the deterrent uh, without escalation, because I don't think escalation is anyone's, in anyone's interest here. Congressman Adam Schiff, I can't thank you enough for being with us this morning. I always appreciate your time. Let's continue our conversation going forward. Look forward to it. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.